Welcome to Time Out, a podcast that brings creatives together for helpful and insightful discussions. So sit back and enjoy the show. What's up, Alex? Welcome to the show, man. Yo, it's nice to nice to be on a podcast. I've been watching a few of them. Oh, thank you so much for coming on, man. I'm so excited just to hear about your journey, what you've been doing, and I've seen it firsthand. You grow the ladder of success, and I think you're just a great example for a lot of people who'll be watching. So yeah, I just want to hear your side of the story, and you know, before we do, you know, who are you and what do you do? Well, I'm a photographer, videographer, director. Um, do a lot of stuff in brand brands and fashion, um, and music, and a lot of different stuff really anything I can really do um yeah and how old are you I'm 19 I just turned 19 in September so very young and very successful and it's an attractive field to be in as well because you've got quite a lot of longevity going into it as well haven't you yeah I feel like I've got a lot um a lot of time on my hands I've got a lot of stuff still to come and it's quite a scary thing to think about That's when when you crazy yeah no it's definitely it's definitely good to be young but at the same time sometimes it's annoying to be uh in the industry when you're young because you feel like you haven't got you've got time on your side but you feel like you also haven't got time on your side because time is what you need to to meet people and and build a network you know yeah i mean that's all it is you know everyone's a product of time and uh we could talk a, a lot about that later as well um and just kind of like pick your brains on you know how you very young and successfully kind of you know got to where you are right now um mm. so you finished school like what what how did you get into actually doing this full time are you full time now like what what are you actually like, doing full-time. currently um, well, I finished school. I don't know when I finished school because of lockdown and stuff. I would have finished in August, I think. I studied uh, film and media at the Brit School, which is a creative arts school. Nice. Um, I studied there for two years, but I've been. I first picked up a camera when I was sixteen. Um, there was a friend in my class who was messing around with cameras and stuff. Started going out with him. Started shooting with him a little bit, and I just just became really obsessed with it just like shooting as much as I could and then I realized that I wanted to study it and stuff so I studied it for two years um started like falling in love with it even more so I doing even more and then whilst I was at school I was like doing as much outside of school as well so trying to just shoot artists and rappers and stuff on the side of school and just shoot every time you know every every moment I could get that's good. So you were actually spending your time quite wisely, like free time where other people might just be like kind of just spending it recreationally. You were trying to think ahead and plan ahead of where you wanted to go. Yeah, I mean, I, I was I was kind of thinking about where I wanted to go and stuff. But at the same time, I was just like, oh, I just I just want to go out and shoot. And that's all I want to do. All I want to do is I just want to go out and take pictures and make videos and stuff. It wasn't even about like, oh, I'm like shooting bigger and bigger people or I'm like gonna be big or this or that or anything like that it was really just i just want to go out and shoot and i just want to get better and better because you see people on instagram you see their pictures when you're starting out and you just want to be like i want i want pictures like theirs you know Mm -hmm. yeah everyone has like their little inspiration like sort of tree and where you start and where you finish and i've seen it personally i think you've made absolute leaps and bounds on like setting your style and where you've come from we're gonna have a look at your work later on as well but you know one of the taboo claims these days is you know do you need education did it teach you anything and should you go should you have gone to university or do you feel like you're better off without it well I think um because I studied at the Brit school for two years Brit school is quite a well-known or it's just a very school good school to go to for creative arts and stuff like that and so the course that I was on for two years was basically a university course um and I also felt like because I'd been building up my business and been networking and been working outside of school the entire time I was at school, I was kind of ready and prepared to just jump straight into it as soon as school was over. And I just thought, well, I can go to university for three years and I can study what I partially already know. Um, and then three years later, do what I want to carry on doing now. Or I can just jump into the deep end now and sink or swim and I think that's that's kind of the best way to learn to just put yourself under pressure and 
and just kind of in a way give yourself no other option you know I'm like I'm not going to university I don't have like a safety net I'm not getting an apprenticeship I'm like trying to build my own business and trying to do everything I can myself um so I think it's definitely definitely worth it just jumping straight into it really yeah I think if you've already got a good support system at home as well like if you're you know if you don't have anything crazy to worry about then yeah I think jumping into the deep end is probably the the best way to learn because like you said there's a lot of safety nets at uni but I found that for myself I learned just so much more on the scene than I did you know what I was when I even I did film at uni and it just it felt it was catering more towards like legacy media so it was more like about television it was more about like Hollywood <laughs> industry publication and magazines and i was like that's cool but there's a new thing called like you know social media and it's like everyone can be an independent creator and self-sustain themselves and there's no yeah. sort of like definite there might be a cause for it but you know you might have to venture out to a certain uni or to a certain place for it but it's like you don't really need a degree now so you know instead of getting yourself into that debt like you said you you can spend that time wisely learn and just start your own businesses like you have and just get there a lot quicker where you need yeah, no, hundred percent. Because by the time um, I would have finished, or by the time my peers have finished uni, I'll be years and years ahead, in my in my opinion, on all of those people that did go to uni. Because you kind of just, unless you're doing stuff whilst you're at uni, yeah, you yeah. just just start your career as soon as uni's over. Whereas yeah. I would have been making. Um, leaves and bounds or whatever yeah and i don't think it's uh it's um it's it's like we're saying you shouldn't go because i think it all depends on level of confidence like you already knew how to handle a lot of you know uh, your equipment and you know your knowledge and if you don't have that knowledge and i think university is a great place to experiment and have that safety net so i think it all depends on the individual person and i think if if you're someone who's like you said started with passion then yeah you've got time on your side to really build that profile so jump into yeah. that today and i'd already i'd already had the experience of studying already so i didn't feel like i needed to go and study it for longer um where some people don't have the privilege to go and like to have already studied it um because a lot of people are just at, like regular schools or they're just it's just like a passion and then they kind of want to explore that a little bit more at uni everyone has their own you know journey and everyone has their own way of doing it i just mm -hmm. i just wanted to jump straight into it you know it's a good it's a good uh way of doing it it's definitely a lot of hardships around it and i think we should probably talk a little bit about that like you know what are some of the expectations that you might want to tell people about like you know how did you, how was your journey jumping straight into it like do you get a job straight away do you get paid straight away do you have the mm. gear straight away like what did you have to do to even start getting like clients and commissions and you know, how long did that take well when when i kind of started actually not not what so there's a very big transition from shooting landscapes and shooting your your friends and just shooting random stuff for the sake of it versus when you start shooting people that want to start posting or start shooting brands and doing commission work and there was a day that i was just out and about with a friend and i bumped into this influencer and took pictures of him and stuff and then he posted them and then i got a little bit of traction on my page and then I started shooting other influencers and I just started shooting more and more influencers and then like smaller rappers started hitting me up and stuff and I realized that I could DM loads of people and just shoot with them. But for the first year that I was doing that, I was doing absolutely everything that I could for absolutely nothing. You've got yeah. to understand on monetary value and things. And at that time, I was, I was 16, 17. And I had like a 200 pound camera, you know, I didn't have all the best equipment. Humble was, beginnings. <laughs> it, like it was, it was very um, lucky that a lot of those people even just wanted to shoot with me, you know, because I wasn't like some massive photographer or anything. They just kind of wanted content. And for me, it was just a way to add names and stuff. But I didn't see it at that time as, oh my God, I deserve like money or I deserve because I, I'm, I've never really been in, into photography or anything for the money. And so it didn't really hurt me when I was starting out that I wasn't getting paid for a lot of the work that I was doing at the very, very beginning. Um, but then as you learn and as you shoot more people and as your work grows, 
you have to understand how to value your your content and how you value yourself as a business but how long did it take for you to get to that point because i think a lot of people might understand that yeah we're gonna have to do some level of like free work to get there but what is like the right amount of time maybe some people spend too long doing free work and maybe some people spend not enough so like how did you find like that moment where you were like okay now i think i can you know really start finding my value and worth I mean, I was always trying to find ways to charge and I was always trying to find justification for the free work that I was doing, because if you're not getting monetary value out of something, you have to look for the non-monetary value out of it. So if I'm going to go and shoot this rapper for free, you got to go and think about, OK, well, how's that going to benefit me beyond an Instagram tag? Mm. Because a lot of people get caught up in Instagram tags and a lot of the time it really doesn't matter if you don't already have the platform because you really think that man go and check you out and go and obsess over your work when mm -hmm. they're not you're necessarily your target audience do you think so people I, fall into the trap of um exposure like working for exposure people, constantly working for exposure people definitely do and even when i was starting out i was always justifying free work with exposure but i started realizing that i didn't care about exposure very early on I, I realized very early on that I cared about networking and meeting the right people. And you got to understand that it's more important to work for nothing to make sure you meet someone somehow or you get into a certain room more so than it is to get tagged in a picture or to hopefully gain a few more followers. Yeah. You know, I would rather shoot this random businessman, this shoot this random businessman because it means that I get to be in a room with all of his his friends and him and I can then talk to all of them and then probably get paid work out of that in the future. Recurring, versus, yeah. Versus if some random, you know, rapper hit me up going, oh yeah, you want to shoot behinds on my shoot? I'll tag you. Which which do you want to shoot for free? You got to think about what, what value overall are you getting out of it? I think when you're younger, it might seem more attractive to get like that tag, you know, and it's like a sort of like a trophy for a lot of people, isn't it? Like, oh, got this other checklist, got that other checklist. Not saying you shouldn't. I think there's a good sense of like reward and feeling, but eventually you start to realize, oh, my battery's died. I need to pay for this. Oh, my lens is broke. I need to pay for that. How am I going to justify keep doing like free work and exposure only if I don't find ways to sustain your own sort of like passion, you know? Because once, once it gets a lot more serious with gear and stuff, you have to really start thinking about how you're going to run a business. But a lot of people do a lot of free stuff and a lot of cheap stuff because they don't understand the business side of things. I know a lot of people that have great work, but they don't understand business. And so they don't understand how to justify a cost. They don't know how to pitch a brand. They don't know how to budget a shoot. Um, and, and so they kind of they suffer because there's no one that can tell them how to do all that stuff you know there's not a teacher that can just sit there and go oh you should charge this and charge that and did you learn any of that when you were at your school no and that's that's the main issue i had is they teach you a lot of traditional stuff it's all about you know very traditional media it wasn't you know you can dm a rapper or you can dm an influencer or you can email a company or you can and, pitch a proposal that like you're saying, or, or you networking and all yeah. this kind of thing. They don't teach you about how to network. You know, they don't, they don't teach you that. And that's the thing I had to learn on my own. But going back to what you were saying about the longevity, longevity or, or working for exposure or doing free stuff and, and that, I mean, I was probably, before I started saving up for my new camera, is when I was really like, I started taking it very seriously. I was like, I need to charge for stuff because I want to buy stuff. Mm -hmm. I started how seriously I wanted to take it. And I started going, wow, I need to figure out how am I going to earn money? How am I going to make purchases so that I can get to the next level? And so I started um, shooting more companies. So I started shooting, shooting some stuff that I didn't want to get, um, shooting stuff that I didn't want to get because it would give me more money. Um, and then I bought a camera. I bought a 1DX Mark II. Really and nice camera. <laughs> everything for me but i had to work really hard to get to get that camera it's a very expensive piece of equipment man yeah it is and i put literally like every penny I, I had into that camera um and it was like the biggest investment ever imagine being you know just turning 18 
and then putting all of your money. I just realized the your age and owning that camera at your age as well. It's like a lot of people will probably take out loans for that camera. They will work months to get that camera, you know what I mean? Yeah. So it's yeah, like it's an achievement. No. I had to I had to work a lot to get that camera. I mean, I was lucky because I was working with this artist called Sarkodi and he's like he's he's like the biggest uh, rapper in Ghana. And I was shooting I started shooting more and more big, bigger artists and started getting paid and started earning money and started saving it and stuff. That's good. But I still had like a 200 pounds camera. Yeah. I was, I was getting jobs and I started being around photographers who had way better equipment mm-hmm. and I really like I need, need to up fun. your game. <laughs> yeah. And it's it's mad because you do realize you're in a field of competition. So yeah, you might at some point get tunnel vision, but you gotta you gotta always assess the landscape and be like, am I doing enough to keep standards high? And but some people might go too far and just buy all the gear, and it's just like, well, you like I mean, you know, you you did a lot with a two hundred pound camera, and it got you to places where you needed before you needed to get to the next point. So I don't know about you, but I always think like the thing I learned in this industry is just about making bets at the right time and the right place and it's just about having that instinct and you get that with experience doesn't matter how old you are it's just like you said the you you spend a lot of your time learning the business learning how to network and a lot of people are just probably looking for something similar you know like answers and hopefully they find it today on this podcast you never know <laughs> yeah i mean the thing is as well like people dm you and dm me going how do i do blah blah, blah. and it's kind of like well yeah, I've, yeah. I can't sit here for because it's it, it's not like a simple answer to a lot of this stuff. Yeah, this not yet. The it's not. is out there. The information there's the internet is vast, man. Yeah, All the it's out yeah. there, and people it's not out there. Even I'm like it's not it's not accessible. If you look and you really look, the info is out there. You can figure yeah. out how to charge. And you know. You've- got to remember like the when they ask you that question it's like they are expecting that answer based on your niche and your style and your taste and it's like even if i give you all the answers what are you going to do with it are you going to try and replicate the same model because there already is a version of me that exists so do you want to be something that's the same or do you want to be something that's you it's like someone asks you a question alex and they're like you know how did you start shooting with rappers how can i get the same sort of like images as you it's like what you know what, what would be your response to that um, well, I'll tell them, okay, you want to start shooting rappers? Um, start showing up to music events. Sneak it's into... Common, con- common sense, isn't it? It's just a bit of common yeah. sense. Or, or DM them. You want to shoot rappers? Well, like, like what? You, you, do you think I'm just going to go, oh, yeah, well, go find this magic key and then unlock the chest and you're going to shoot this rapper? I wish it was that <laughs> easy. <laughs> like, you're going to have to yeah. DM all of their friends try and shoot one of their friends and then get their friend to go and chat to the rapper. Yeah, you know what and I mean? it, it, it's, it's crazy though, but it's like you said, this is networking and it's like you have to do a lot of things you may not necessarily have priority in your vision, but just to get to the person or the company or the place you need, you got to do all these little like, I think of it as like a game, it's like side quest, get to the side quest and then you can go to the main quest later. It is, there's a lot of side quests at the start, man, because you, you have to you're not going to start earning a lot of money or you're not going to get the shoots you want. You're not going to get the work you want. and You're not going to create a lot of the work you want unless you're around the right people and you've built a network for yourself. A lot of people um, don't think enough about the network and the fact that, that it's, it's more important at the start to build a network than to build an array of posts and tags and clout. Yeah. Because anyone can make, you know, a good impression online, but the one thing you don't realize is alongside a good impression online, you need to build trust and you build that trust with the person you're going to shoot with by having a good relationship face to face. And I don't know about you, but that's what helped me get to where I am. And it's like I have, by meeting them constantly, turning up constantly, offering them more than, you know, sometimes what they, they want. It's like you build that relationship and trust so they don't even turn an eye anywhere else and building relationships is the most important thing like you're going to get booked again if they like you or they're going to suggest you to a friend if they like you a lot Mm -hmm. of this is about 
being likable. Sometimes I compare it to being a barber. You know, you go and you get your hair cut, you talk to your barber a little bit, he makes yeah. you look good, you trust him, and then you always go back when you need another haircut. That's a really great analogy. I like that one, yeah. Yeah. You know? I agree. Um, but if you go to the barbers, he gives you a dodgy haircut or maybe he cuts <laughs> your neck a little bit or, <laughs> or, or he overcharges you or like... Yeah. Well, you know, you're not gonna you're gonna go find another barber because there's a lot of fucking barber shops out there. Yeah, there is. There's a lot, and that's what this industry is like. There is a there's a lot of choice, and you got to stand out. You got to shine. And uh, let's jump on that. You know, how did you create your unique selling point, and what's your style? So we'll check out your work and just see what that's all about. Like, I think you know, how would you even define yourself as a creative? Like, what is it you're doing, and what are you trying to show people? Like, what are you trying to capture? And you know. All the questions, I'm you know. Pretty, right now, my style is all over the place. I've been, the last six months, I've been really trying to find my specific style. And, and in lockdown, I kind of developed this really like moody, very cinematic, Alan Palander esque grading style. And it was all really nice tones and it was really cinematic. I think you've Crit- got like yeah definitely a taste in tones that i can tell yeah but like now as i've been shooting more stuff and as i've played around with it if you go down my feed and then you come up it's become a lot more simple because the issue i found with instagram and and me as a photographer is i want to see nice tones i want to see beautiful color grades i want to see colors pop in i want to see it be really like cinematic and all that and that's what other photographers want to see on Instagram. They're going to mm-hmm. go, oh, nice, nice picture. Love the tones. Great, blah, blah. And then you just start shooting and editing what everyone's typing and saying is great. It's easy to fall in that trap, isn't it? Like trying to uh, work work for the for the machine and not for yourself. Yeah. And, and I got just fixated on, oh, just did this shoot. Can't wait to do a moody color grade on it. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's, I think at the beginning, everyone kind of does look for those like, you know, um, like top trends, whether it's on YouTube or Instagram, we're all looking to see on the formula that works so we can just kind of like shine a little bit more. But I think like you said, you know, like you're doing really well, you're at the place where you're very comfortable in your own sort of like unique selling point. And it's like, you can experiment now, you got the freedom to do it. I mean, like you even got yourself on the feed now, man, check you out. I need... I, I'm still too afraid of doing that. I don't know if I want to put myself on the beach yet. I've thought, I've thought about it, but... Uh... I think it's important to pose, to pose yourself because if you're a photographer and your name is, is, is your brand, mm-hmm. you should put imagery and more about yourself in some yeah. ways. It's, it's like you were saying, it's like you were saying, you know, I think you're a very likable guy, but if other people notice that as well, it's like there's another layer to your work that people see. It's not just the work, it's not just the camera, it's the person as well. Yeah. And but sometimes, just, like, this kind of shot, it's like, it just just looks really good. It looks like you're ready to roll with your work, and, like, it, it's about marketing yourself as well, isn't it? 100%, because the thing is, I'm not going to post any, like, everything that I post of myself is still going to be branded in a, in a sense. If I am my business, I'm I'm always trying to stay on brand with with certain things I'm posting. You know. Yeah. I'm not, like a picture of me and my nan or me and my dog. You know. I'm gonna post me at work, me grinding mm-hmm. because that's what the clients are gonna see and that's what they're gonna. <laughs> be like. I'd love to see your nan and your dog on the feed in a really like <laughs> Alex graded tone. It could work. <laughs> but that cinematic color grade on Nana, you know. Yeah, but it's as, crazy. As I've, been shooting more my grade style has become more simplified because i started realizing that it was too artsy to me and you as photographers Mm -hmm. our style doesn't feel artsy it feels cinematic it feels full of tones Mm -hmm. but to the general client and the general person that's very artsy to them yeah that's you got to understand as well, like, there's a limit to being too self-indulgent. Like, when you're working with clients, it's their vision you're ultimately trying to fulfill. Yeah. And, I, and, and I've, I've slowly, I'm, I'm kind of easing into it, but I'm making my work a lot more general, a lot more, a lot more less edit-based. I think everyone starts to think that the, the image is suddenly, like, the edit is the most important thing. But yeah, me, yeah, yeah. Now... I'm trying to put a little bit more uh, effort into um, 
the location and everything in camera. A hundred percent, yeah, hundred percent. I agree uh, with everything you're saying. Like the it's, it's, the more like layers you add to your photography, like thinking about the angles. I just love this. Like you thought about the lighting, the angles, everything. It just looks really great, man. Like and you know you you're thinking about as well when you're shooting portraits. And I, I from like my point of view, like you know when I look at your work, I just think portraits you like you just know your shit like when it comes to portraits and you just know how to frame people you know how to capture personalities and is that just from like you know your time in music and even like you know people like like celebrities as well like what are you thinking about when you're trying to capture them is it is it because me i'm like way on the end of spectacle but are you thinking a more natural lifestyle a lot of the time it's a lot more natural i wouldn't necessarily say a lifestyle but i just i always say something i always say when i'm on set or when i'm shooting is if i if i ask them to pose a certain way i always go are you comfortable if you're not comfortable please can you just adjust yourself so you are comfortable because the more natural they feel the better it's going to look i don't yeah. i never want to force a pose too much unless mm -hmm. it unless, unless it looks good of course yeah uh, but I definitely like shooting more candid stuff. Um, but I just like to make sure that whatever I'm shooting suits the person. Yeah, you know? I love this shot. I just thought it captured the personality really well. And I was just like, one of your best shots, in my opinion. Really? Yeah, yeah, oh, I love man. that one. It just looks like the front cover of an album cover. I can see like your taste in like, you know, Ooh. for passion and music and, you know, just shooting rappers and everything else in between. It's like... Yeah. I mean, it's funny because... Now I'm trying to get away from shooting as many rappers. Yeah, you know, Just talk about. I'm trying. That. I'm shooting. Um, what I'm shooting, I'm trying to be a lot more specific these days with what I take on. I don't need to take every client on or every job on, but 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 what it, I do need to do is I need to make sure the jobs that I am taking on are contributing to um, what I want to do long term. You know, I'm taking less one-off jobs and more jobs that I feel will have some longevity in. But shooting more stuff that I think is a bit more... I think yeah. Music video shoots and taking behind-the-scenes pictures of rappers isn't con contributing to my portfolio as a photographer. I don't, yeah. You know, um, I don't shoot that much behind-the-scenes anymore. I think that's one of the things you shoot very early on. Um, and I'm trying to shoot a lot less street-style stuff yeah yeah i can see that on your feed is very diverse now and yeah. um i'd say you're like expanding yourself out into like different different territories and i think you know what do you what what's your advice for people is that a good thing like being able to jump into so many different sort of fields as a creative like do you do you think you've gone from like being in a comfortable niche to now trying to be a bit more accessible i'm trying to be a lot more accessible um i'm trying to make sure that when a brand comes on my page they can see something that they're gonna like rather than them going on my page and they're them not ever having any content that was ever like mine because something that i also realized was i was always trying to pitch the brands very early on my content and my style rather than fitting the brand yeah that, yeah that's you photographers have you have to make your work more appealing to um a wider range of people and that's yeah. the, do that is in some ways make it simpler but just see who do you want to shoot and what are all the the common things that that they have and how can you apply that to your work you know yeah because that's such a taboo thing to do is like spend all this time crafting your unique selling point but then don't use it later on <laughs> and yeah. it takes and you know it's a lot of like you know there's a lot of humility in that and i think it's like, you know, your style isn't going to go anywhere. And that's how I kind of curate my feed. It's like on my feed, it's just me having fun. But then I'm always, like you said, thinking about the client first and then maybe ways that I can help them, you know, stand out a bit more. And if my style sometimes align, then it will. But if it doesn't, it's not really the end of the world. Like I'm doing stuff like sports and like sports kind of lifestyle shoots. I'm like, I'd never done that, but like I did it and it hit it off with the client. And it's like, they just want me for like recurring work constantly now. And that's like, like ask Good. any gym client, like why would you hire out a street style fashion photographer? You wouldn't, but it's like, by putting myself in that situation of like humility, it got me there. And it's like, I, I've just got tons of little like other things I'm putting my feet into. Um, mm. But it's like you said, I think it's good to be accessible and- Be accessible, but I also think 
don't be too all over the place. You want to still be niche to a degree. I still I still shoot portraits. I still shoot fashion and music. Mm-hmm. But I'm not editing everything the exact same anymore. You know, I think that was a bit of a, a hard um, thing for me to to change. Was to, it like breaking up with your girlfriend? <laughs> yeah, it's like you, after editing a certain way and thinking, oh, this is what everyone likes to see. Oh, this is what everyone wants from me on Instagram. And what I like to edit and what I think it's good to suddenly being like, oh, I don't think this is right for the work that I want to be doing was a was was difficult. But it's something that I'm glad I realized because now I can make that adjustment and it's making, you know, um, me get better clients. Um, it's like you so, said, it's all, it's, all, it's all to do with being more accessible. Not everyone's going to roll with an edit style always but if you can do many different things and you're just building your your own like you know skills up even more so yeah just to all the people listen just don't fall into that trap of being too comfortable be comfortable for an amount of time to be unique enough but then it's so ironic isn't it but then also you got to learn how to be accessible enough realize like like if 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 you're not moving forward in the, in the direction you want to go or you're not in the right spot you have to evaluate what you're doing and if you have to make a drastic change or not otherwise you're going to sit in the same spot you know yeah that's my biggest worry in this industry like just watching time fly it's like use like i think time is the only real currency we have and it's like how you spend it is like what's going to really determine like where you're going to see yourself in a few years it's bro time is like my biggest fear my biggest fear is time running away from i can me. see it in your eyes right now <laughs> i'm like my time bro time yeah, you know, it's coming for us all. Like I've got, I've got a thing of of it's always been. I never want to tell someone my age because they'll they'll assume a a certain uh, quality out of me. Oh, he's really? young. I I find that so weird because I think now more than ever you got such you know more role models who are younger. I think that's more of an attractive option than me going to send someone. Hey, I'm 28 and like. <laughs> you know i don't know the drill like what i don't understand why this stigma exists like at the end of the day if you're talented you're talented isn't it it's true but a lot of people try and take advantage of you if you're young because they think yeah oh, that's true i've been doing this for that long i maybe i can charge I can less and do this smaller or oh i can pull exposure a yeah or not from exposure but also i hated the kind of thing of being on set and someone goes oh how old are you how long have you been doing this and then me going oh like i'm 18 19 and then going like oh you're so young you're so new and then it kind of being like yeah well i'm young and i'm new but i've done a lot more stuff than some people that have been doing this and they're 26 27 you know yeah 100 percent. yeah I, I got fed up i got fed up of the whole age thing um yeah I think it's definitely not a measure of of success but some people don't understand that because they didn't find success when they were young you know some deep facts and truths here on today's podcast <laughs> bro i'm a very straight up person man i just like i, I think like, i think what you're saying yeah i think a lot of people are jumping into like that whole like expectations um discussion and i think it's like yeah just have realistic expectations there's a there's a lot of harsh criticism to go around this industry and how you manage it as well like and hmm. Some people are just in denial as well. You know, it works both ways. Yeah, it's it's true. Because sometimes, like, you might think you're really sick for being super young, but you're not, you know? Like, I might not be as good as I think. And I kind of had to give myself a reality check when I was really starting out, being like, oh, I'm 17, I'm 16, 17, I'm shooting rappers, look at me, I'm so amazing. Whereas now I'll be like, I'm 19, but I'm not good enough you know because i've i've had that whole knowing what i want to do and knowing how successful i want to be of going well my age doesn't matter because i know mm-hmm. other photographers are also young that have done way more than me yeah or, and it's good to it's good to see that as well like i love people i love seeing people win uh, especially when they're in your own sort of like community or close friends like i've just seen you just rock it into like the stratosphere and doing your thing ever be? yeah man just 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 gone into like the strats and broke it man like but yeah doing bits and it, i think it's just like you said like you share a lot of enthusiasm with other people you're not very like 
you don't come across as competitive, you come across as eager to learn. And I think that's one thing people should be willing to do in this industry. Like, obviously, like if someone's treating you like crap, know your worth, know when to walk away, know who not to trust and who not to work with. But it's, I think, like you said, to get to places, you need to be a likable person. You need to be, you know, an enthusiastic person. You need to be sociable. Like we're saying all this stuff, but like you said, like there might be introverts who might hate networking and that might be your biggest barrier. So... I'm the biggest introvert. When I'm at home, I don't want to talk to anyone. I don't want to answer texts. I don't want to call my friend. I just want to be left alone. But when I'm on a shoot, yo, man, what's your name? Yeah. What you Where are you from? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Instagram, let's hang out. Oh, let, who can you introduce yeah. me to? Your yeah, Apple Watch is just there like 120 beats per minute. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but that's, that's how you, you, you'd be. When, when I was 16 and I was shooting behind the scenes, I would walk up to every single person on set and I would go, hey, do you want a picture? Just follow me on Instagram and I'll send you the picture. And I'd meet 30 people that day. And I'd expand my network by 30 people every single music video yeah. shoot. And that you sounds know? like it might not be a lot in terms of followers. But when you follow the right 30 people, that's legendary Like networking. It's like you're going to get to places a lot faster. True, because it's always people, man. The reason you see some photographers that aren't that good shooting massive artists is because they met the right person you know it is about who you know in this industry it, absolutely and to get far you gotta do your absolute best to just meet people yeah and, and i not meet people but to build relationships with them it's all good having met someone and then exchanging emails but what if they don't want to help you out what if they don't want to give you what what they do what if it's not the appropriate thing to meet someone and go, oh, yeah, help me out. Here's my email. Let's talk work. When they might not be interested. What if the appropriate thing is to have an interesting conversation with them? Go, oh, follow me on Instagram. Sometimes oh. it is as simple as that. Yeah, sometimes it's not about like, yeah, it's, it's like you said, it's about making the right bets. Yeah. Yeah, um, I agree. When you're, when, when you're young and stuff, you're so eager to work and stuff, you forget that sometimes the work comes second to, you know, being human, you know, it's easy to just look at people as, 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 uh, like commodities that you can just be disposed of in exchange yeah, and this exactly. kind of thing. Yeah. Cause a lot of people see a rapper as an Instagram tag. Mm -hmm. That's what, that's what a lot of photographers do, but yes, they, should yeah. someone, they should see someone that can introduce them to their and manager. You know, we're, we're saying all this from our point of view, but, you know, on their end, they must feel a lot of, like, you know, like, anxiety when they meet creatives. They're like, oh, these guys might just be after, like, you know, my own name in their portfolio. And it's like you said, you know, seeing people as human first. It's, 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 it's so simple, but, you know. Absolutely important to see people as human first, you know, because when you're very obsessed with what you're, do, you're, you're doing or what, when you want to be successful, it's easy to just see things as stepping stones, but really you have to, you, you have to be um, kind and you have to be treating, you have to treat people like people, you know? It's so easy to get caught up in numbers and caught up in tags and caught up in names in your portfolio, whereas you should be seeing them as relationships. Yeah, because I, that's... There's a lot of photographers that are tagging these people that they've done shoots with and then they don't talk to them for the rest of the month because they don't have an actual relationship with them you know yeah that's the sad reality of it i guess it's just like a, like we talk about it's just a trophy and you know building the relationship is what's going to really get you far in because that's how i get my name passed around and to be honest like networking with other creators is like how i pass other people's names around as well it's like it's all it just works in our, all our favors you know we all lift each other up so it's important to just be just be nice to everyone, talk to everyone. The only thing that I have is you have to know what's business and what's not business because there's a lot of people that will talk to you and a lot of people that will want to chat to you or catch up or have a phone call with you. But or, there's an intention behind or, it. Or, or collabor <laughs> let's do a collaboration. But I'm sitting there like, well, what's, what's the agenda? What's the intent? Yeah. And you've got to learn how to understand that language. you got to understand with are you because it's like you might think that you're you're being very smart by going oh this person shoots such and such and i want to meet them too let's let's shall i just say to them oh yeah let's collaborate and they won't have that they won't know 
the first thing that person is thinking of when you say that to them is what does this person want out of me yeah and i'm sure many creators can relate and it's like you know not that collaboration is a bad thing it all just depends on finding your worth like you said before if the collaboration means you both get something out of it that you're both happy with yeah that's all that matters it doesn't have to be money it could just be like you're doing a concept okay cool there's passion involved right what i've got maybe free time on the calendar this might be worth me using it as like something to experiment with or you know just doing it for this for, for the fun of it and sometimes collaborations are just a great way of just learning new ideas but it's like you said like yeah when you're just you can tell when you're being taken advantage of when the especially when people request a collaboration but it's very low effort and it's all in their favor and there's nothing reciprocal about it yeah i think it's important that if you do collaborations you need to make sure that you're getting equal value out of it because a lot of people want to collaborate because it's going to benefit them more if you're going to collaborate make sure the value is 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 equal and the passion is equal because i don't do a lot of collaborations with photographers i i don't do a lot of collaborations with other creatives because it doesn't make sense just because you dm me let's collaborate suddenly i should you know take loads of time out of my week to plan and meet up and shoot no because i, I this is a full-time job now and i got a lot of client work to do but if you're a photographer that i've been talking to and i've got a I've got a relationship with, we can FaceTime, we can talk, you send me work, I send you my work, and there's something there, and then you turn around to me and you go, oh, I've got this cool idea. Do you want to like shoot it with me? I will go, yes, 100%. But if you're someone that I don't really know, I don't have a shared interest with, why am I yeah. going to clap? Because I yeah. don't have to take with it. You know? Yeah, and it's like, and, and those are some of the harsh realities, you know, like you've got to be your own boss. No one's going to manage yeah. you except for yourself and like you said you've got to spend your time wisely with the people you want to work with and time is of the essence in this industry like turn over everything crunching so you know you got to find yeah. ways to just keep yourself healthy and afloat but you also have a clothing brand yeah that you yeah. Brand. totally forgot to talk about that but you know you're very young and successful but at this age as well like i should say you know 19 now at your big age now um you've got yourself a clothing brand as well is that right yeah yeah i've got a clothing brand i wouldn't i would say i'm a bigger photographer than um my clothing brand is a brand if that makes sense yeah um, i'm just gonna pull it up but the reason i started a clothing brand is because i was like 16, 17 i just i just wanted to shoot brands but at that time no one was hiring me to shoot brands no like no one was shoot like hiring me to shoot clothing and so I just decided to make a brand myself to fund studio time and to create a purpose to shoot brand content. And then other people started hiring me a little bit more to shoot. And then now I shoot brands regularly, you know? Yeah. Um, so I'm definitely a self-starter. I'm very, I'm, I'm clearly a very extra person. Oh, brands yeah. aren't hiring me. I'll make my own. I mean, you look like well, you know exactly, you know, you know what you're doing. It's definitely a passion. Hmm? you look like you know exactly what you're doing Sorry. with the brand as well i really like the like the direction of the brand and you know like how it's how it's designed and you know you, it's got your touch and flavor on it as well you know with the pictures yeah yeah i think definitely i just i just like the idea of having something and having complete creative control and expression out of it you know um I, I find it really fun to, to have a clothing brand because I can shoot whatever I want for it, you know? Mm -hmm. For me, it's not necessarily about, about well, this might sound bad. I might, I, I might not be the best clothing designer. I might not sell the very best um, clothing items, but I love shooting it. I love going to the studio. I love designing something and then seeing it in person and then, like, planning it and curating it like owning a clothing brand as a photographer is like the 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 perfect way to just express yourself creatively because you're shooting exactly what you want mm -hmm. you're designing exactly what you want shooting exactly the right models you want you get to see it all put together on posters and on a website and um, on ads and creating a logo and like you just it's just a great way to, to have creative control and expression really but um in some ways i see it like a hobby but 
because for for a while I was just doing like thirty day drops. So it was just like a like a limited edition kind of thing, and a lot of friends and family would buy it. Um, mm-hmm. But now a little bit more longevity for it, making like longer longer collections and stuff. Yeah. That's good, and it's like you said, you you're still so young, and the longevity in your career and the, what the brand could have, and you just got that extra insight and knowledge when you go to shoot client's brand or someone hires you it's like yeah well you know i've got my own brand i'll know how to shoot yours as well you know there's just that extra little thing that you might have over you know people and it's a nice way to just set yourself apart so it's mad i don't understand why anyone would judge you for being too young like you know like all that you know like the camera gear they don't necessarily yeah it is weird because i've had clients that suddenly look at me differently once i've told them oh yeah i'm 18 19 you know, it's it's a strange thing. But then there's people that think it's awesome, you know. Um, it just depends on who it is. But I think it's definitely not something that I brag about. Like, oh, yeah, I'm only 18, 19. Look at me. Because I think it's, it's more important to just let the work speak speak for itself, you know. Yeah, that's it, man. Just got to let the work speak for itself. And the rest is uh, the rest is business. And you're doing just fine. And I'm very proud of you. And you and you're doing it. Thanks, man. I'm I'm happy for you as well. You've been killing the gram, man. Oh, thank you, man. We're all just on our own little journey, doing our own thing. Wanna, and bro, I want to see I want to see this e-commerce you've been shooting. I want to see that sports content you, you've been shooting. Can we? Oh, expect, yeah. Can we expect to see some of that on Is Is Grid? Oh, that's an interesting what? one. Um, this is the thing. I think I you know like how you've been talking about you know um time my time for confessions now. How you've been talking about how you had to like. <laughs> loosen up and um you know start changing your feed i think i'm still a little bit in my comfort zone and you know i'm still going backwards and i'm very i'm very conflicted in terms of like how i want to go in my direction like visually Mm. because you know yeah and 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 you know i love streetwear it's where i'm trying to mold my niche and i still think i have a lot to learn in it but when i think about the reach that a feed post as compared to my story it's like you know i could probably benefit by putting some alternative content on my um instagram that wouldn't be streetwear but then i think about my target audience and i don't want to alienate them and so i'm just like a system uh, or a product of the system myself you know i'm in like this really ironic place where i'm trying to find like a way to you know I, well, well, I found a way. No, I, I am like experimenting with different niches. I'm shooting sports. I'm shooting lifestyle. I'm but shooting all these other different things. You're shooting more diverse things. It's just yeah. about when you are ready yourself to share it and how you want to share it. You know. Yeah, and to be fair, you know, um, I find that the story is obviously that's where I will spam all the other alternative content because I want people to know I'm not just a fashion photographer. I'm also this and. Uh, and obviously, like I will update the websites, and you know, but well, it's like you as said, you know, yeah, yeah, it's like you said, like you would, I would be a lot more accessible, realistically speaking, if I did put it on there. But when I think about my page, and I've said this on a few Q and As, you know, I want people to know me for what is known for, and that is like you know, Mr. Street style, <laughs> and that's where I, and a lot of the stuff you see on my feed is actually not necessarily client work, and I've. You know, it's very mm. intentional because I always love shooting with common people. It's where I have the most sort of, not even common people. It would be like, even if I'm shooting with an influencer and they turn up on my feed, chances are they're shooting on my terms because I've taken them out of their comfort zone. I've splashed them with a load of color, the styling. We've thought about all these amazing different things. So when I want people to look at my feed, I want them to look at the person in terms of like being an artist and you know it's so different to like what you were saying before like you're going a lot more down that sort of business route and i am too in my own little slow journey but i'm still at the stage of where i really want to experiment with my art before i get a bit more sort of like commercial and you'll see like more content on there i've shot a few campaigns that'll end up landing on the feed scene where like the streetwear brand and my sort of like spectacle sort of like ways of like aligned and now it can come on the feed but yeah i need to really like find more ways of marketing myself in terms of like other niches i think it's good though that you're shooting it's not that you're 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 not because you're not posting it doesn't mean you're not shooting it you're still shooting but there's still 
you're still progressing. It's just that you're not. Oh yeah, to. yeah, yeah. I All just right. don't have this, and I don't know if it's an age thing. Uh, I just don't have like a sense of urgency. Like I know, like mm. I, I talked about this a lot, and I was saying that you know, on Instagram, it's like you know, right, shoot the content, turn it over fast, now post it quick, 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 so people just know what I'm succeeding. It's like I just don't have that sense of urgency, and I never have. It's like I love taking my time, man, to like do things, and I'll take as long as I need to get to where I want to be, and. Honest to God, like, you know, if it takes me 10 years to get to where I want to be, then so be it, you know, however long it takes. But I I'm, I feel like, you know, in, in, my, in my own pace where I'm at, I feel very comfortable. But it's nice. like you said, I've got to keep one eye open to also make sure I'm not getting too comfortable. That's why I'm experimenting with these, like, other uncharted territories. Yeah, well, I mean, as long as you're shooting it, you're still... Oh, yeah, 100%, yeah. There's a lot of different content, yeah. But... Yeah, I get. I, I used to be so OCD about my feed. Even now, I'm still like I'm trying to get over. I'm trying to get over over planning my feed because. Oh, are you at that point where you just post stuff now? Just it is what it is. Or do you plan I, stuff? That started yesterday. I just had this video and I was just like, ah, oh, just just post it. Don't even see how it's gonna look on the feed because I have like an app and I will I will I will spend like. It'll be like two o'clock at night, bro. And I'll just be there like, oh, what angle looks best? Which size should it be? Should I post it in five days? And like being totally like over, over dramatic mm-hmm. about how it looks on my feed. And I've realized that when you got 25 drafts of work that you need to post. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, like You're thinking, gotta, too, you might be thinking a little bit too much about it. Start posting now because I've been doing a lot of video work recently. Yeah, which is great. Yeah, and people haven't seen it because I'm trying to. I'm too. I'm being too OCD about when I'm gonna post stuff. Mm-hmm. So I, yeah, I think I just gotta. I just gotta post it. You know, just get it out there. Yeah, but, and I bet you the weight that's lifted off your shoulder is like a good feeling, and that's what it'll be like for me when I finally switch it up as well. <laughs> eventually, I'm like, oh, yeah. I felt so good. But you know this. Yeah, and um, I don't know if you follow Gary Vee, but he's he. I was watching one of his videos, and he said this as well. Like, you know, don't be a slave to your own Instagram. You got to just find the right time of when you want to not live for the likes and the and the trends and start doing things for yourself. And eventually, we'll all get to that point. And I think that's what the another thing to think about on this journey. Yeah, it's hard to balance because now that I've stopped you know, posting moody photography and posting cinematic stuff and all the perfect tones, my, and my, my engagement went down because I'm also not having enough time to afflict through Instagram and mm-hmm. like interact with people. Yeah. And it not felt great because you don't feel like your, your work's getting as much love. But in but, terms of business, how has that been? It's been good, bro, because now I can send people because like I have certain clients and like we'll talk and stuff and I'll be like, oh, I just did this shoot. Like it would be cool to do something like this with you. And then like like just just having new stuff to have not be not be in that niche anymore feels better yeah. because uh, because I'm doing stuff that can appeal to a broader range of people. And so I'm yeah. getting more out of it, not yeah. just because that's what I'm posting, but because that's what I'm doing, because I'm not editing every piece of work the same, you know? Yeah. Um, that's good. But, yeah. Amazing. Well, I think we are getting to the end of the podcast. I'm going for almost an hour. Thank you so yeah. much for coming on, man. I think he spilt some some hard facts today, and I think uh, a lot of people take a lot of knowledge. I have. Uh, definitely give me a reality I- check. <laughs> Me, I'm not putting any hard fact. Like, I just say what I think. I just say, you know, whatever. Like, I haven't, I haven't said anything. I feel like is necessarily bad. If I have, anyone can can tell me it. But <laughs> that, that's just how I feel, you know, um, and and how I've what I've said to myself or the things that I've done for myself, you know. Yeah. Um, because I won't ever tell someone to do something that I wouldn't do, you know. Yeah, you say, we're all figuring it out for ourselves on this journey and it really helps when you get a little bit of insight from, you know, people who are experienced and that's my advice, just communicate, like you said, network with the right people and you'll get there a lot faster. So, yeah, thanks for coming on, man. Um, people can find you on Instagram. All the deets are there in the description and I'm just looking forward to coming to London eventually. I know you guys might be going down to... Oh, guys, <laughs> it'll stay free in a minute. You can, so, you can hide. 
100 we'll, we can 100 collaborate yeah okay i've got it verified here on youtube i can collaborate i've got the golden ticket <laughs> but he's... yeah no but he's... i want to come down i i do want to come down to london just so you can give you a bit of a tour of like the air because there's so many great places i want to shoot and i've just got these mad ideas but i've just not had the chance because i've just been like too busy myself just and yeah. then now with like the whole like lockdown thing it's like eh, is it even worth it <laughs> So maybe next year we'll all like, you know, might get you on a project where you can actually get, you know, both commissions out of like, I, I'm finding that, you know, I'm needing like on my photography jobs, a dedicated videographer if I can't do it on my own. And it's like, that's another great thing about this industry. You know, me and you building relationships, I can now have more room to choose people and yeah, actually definitely. like work together. So that's really good. Yeah. Yeah. Any, uh, yeah. yeah. Any Sorry, final we... things you want to say? Um, whatever you do just put 100 percent in you know just don't do anything half-heartedly all right you heard it here first everyone alex pipe everyone I'll catch you later bye hey. thanks for checking out this episode of Time Out. don't forget to support each guest by checking out their work in the description and you can also support the show with a like subscribe and hitting that notification bell till then stay safe and we'll see you on the next one